Hello and welcome to Code Pro, your source for clear and effective programming tutorials. Today we're going to continue our iOS developer series uh, covering the basics of modal navigation um, and how you can figure out the odds and ends of what it is and how to use it effectively in your project. The end result of what we're going to make today will look something like this. A starting screen uh, with a, a login button to go to another screen and then back to the first screen that we started at. Uh, so our objectives for this lesson will be as follows. We are going to learn how to programmatically transition between view controllers. We are going to learn how to create interface builder actions and we are going to learn how to create very basic auto layout constraints in interface builder. So let's go ahead and get started. Create a new uh, project in Xcode, a single view application. Uh, for this tutorial we're going to be going along in Swift uh, but you can use Objective-C if you prefer. And once your project is set up you'll have your basic files, a main storyboard, a view controller, uh, and an app delegate. So what we want to do is set up our interface builder first with what we need to what we need to do. Um, Xcode already starts us off with a view controller, so that's fine. Uh, we are going to add one additional view controller uh, that we are going to uh, programmatically transition to. So go ahead and open the right toolbar, and we want to go into the object library and find another view controller and we want to drag that onto the storyboard canvas. And once we've done that, let's go ahead and change the colors of these view controllers to give them, uh, make one identifiable from the other. Uh, on the first view controller, I'm just going to select it here, and I'm going to select its view and uh, change its background color. And what you can do is open your little scene menu on the side here and drill down into the view and then go over into what's called the uh, attribute inspector and change that background color to something different. I'm going to change mine to orange. <laughs> and let's go to the next view controller, select it, uh, go ahead and select the view and change that to a different color so we can identify it. Uh, I'm going to use blue. So, okay, now that we have our color set here, uh, let's go ahead and add a new code file for this second view controller that we just added. So go back over to your uh, project directory, right click on your folder, add a new file, and a new Swift file, and we're going to call this view controller 2 create it and uh, we're going to have to set up our basic view controller structure here import UI kit which is our necessary view controller classes provided so graciously by Apple and let's go ahead and define our class view controller 2 which inherits from either you guessed it UI view controller and let's go ahead and uh, override view did load here. So we have a starting point. Okay, perfect. Now let's go ahead and set up the remaining things in the storyboard that we still need to do. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and look for a button in the object library. We want to go ahead and add those buttons that we had in that little demo app I showed you at the beginning of this video. So once you've found your button, select it and drag it onto your view controller. And uh, we're also going to do the exact same thing for the second view controller. Yeah, kind of try and get that in the top right over there. And, um, oh, you can't really see that text too well, can you? We'll go ahead and change the uh, text color to white. And the text, close. Okay. 
And over here, we're also going to change the text. I'm going to just call this login. However, uh, you can call it whatever you want. There's no real reason there to call it login if you don't want to. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the other parts of this tutorial, um, starting with auto layout. So auto layout is a way to pin UI elements to certain positions uh, inside of a, a view element, such as a view controller. Uh, it defines uh, relationships between elements, so it is a way for you to fix a control either in a certain position or to have it adjust as the device sizes change, as the orientation changes, etc. Uh, so what we want to do here is pin this button to the bottom of this view controller. And uh, Xcode's pretty intelligent about it for the most part. You can go over down at the bottom here if you see and um, under resolve auto layout issues and you can find an option here for a view that you select called uh, reset to suggested constraints and most of the time Xcode will be able to figure out and set up the proper constraints for you so you don't have to do too much of the uh, legwork so we're gonna do that for right now and uh, we're gonna do the exact same thing on view, this other view controller that we created select that button go down to resolve auto layout issues and reset to suggested constraints. So now these buttons will be pinned in the proper positions when we run them in the simulator. Uh, but we're not quite done here. We need to do a few more things. Uh, our second view controller, we want to link it to the viewcontroller2.swift file that we created. To do that, we want to go over onto the right side here, uh, open the identity inspector, and change this class to viewcontroller2. And also we want to set the storyboard identifier as we are going to use it in just a few moments. So let us go, and now that we've set that uh, storyboard identifier, go back to view controller one, and once more select our login button. So what we're going to do now is create what's called an interface builder action or an IB action. And basically you can think of it linking the tap or the click of this button to the appropriate view controller so that way that view controller can implement whatever logic it needs to in response to a user tapping the button. Uh, and that's what we're going to do right now. So with the button selected, um, go over into what's called your assistant editor here. So we can split the interface builder and the source files. And let's find view controller, which is the first view controller in the project. And we want to, with our button selected, hold down the control key on the Mac. And with the control key held down, click and hold and drag over to view controller and release the mouse. And now you're going to have a connection that you can create. By default, it's going to create uh, IB outlet connections, and we need to change that to an action. Otherwise, we are not going to have the proper uh, click handler linked up uh, to the interface file. So select action, and let's just call this login tapped, and then go ahead and hit connect. And uh, you can see that Xcode automatically creates that for us. And if you highlight that little bullet icon here, uh, it's showing that, hey, there's a relationship back to the login button. This action has been successfully linked. Uh, so now that we have that done, let us go ahead and create the modal transition from our first view controller to our second one. Uh, so to do that, when a user would press this login button, we are going to use the storyboard identifier to look up view controller two and then create what's called a modal transition to view controller 2. So you might ask what is a modal transition? Uh, you can think about it as a way of uh, having one view controller or one view being applied directly on top of the current view controller like it like it will slide in and transition on top of it. Uh, and so let me show you what that will look like in the code. First of all we need to find our view controller 2 and we will achieve that like this. Let view controller to equals storyboard dot instantiate view controller 
with the identifier that we set, view controller two, and make sure we cast this as view controller to itself. And so let me go ahead and actually implement the transition logic. Present view, view controller to present, which is view controller two. Animated true. And a completion handler, which we're not going to use, we'll just set that to nil for right now. And I'll explain what all of this means in just a second. So what did we just do? We used the storyboard, which is actually a, a property on UI view controller, uh, to find another view controller with the identifier view controller too. Um, and once we have found that, we are going to perform the modal segue which is done right here. And if you look at the documentation, uh, it explains it pretty well, what's going on. Uh, let me see if I can minimize this a little bit. It presents a view controller modally uh, with all of the details uh, and parameters that get passed to this method. Um, and uh, Apple sums that up pretty well there. So doing that, we've just actually created the modal transition, but we're not done. We want to make sure that once we've transitioned over, we can get back to this screen. Uh, and we need to implement that right now. So let's go ahead and slide on over to view controller two. And let's find the corresponding source file, view controller two. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to create an interface builder action or an IB action connection and we're going to implement the logic to dismiss and go back. So let's just call this uh, close handler and connect it. And the way to dismiss this is very simple actually. It's just called dismiss. And animated, we'll say it's true. Completion handler uh, is nil. And just to clarify what that completion handler is, if we were to use it, if we had any cleanup logic or routines that we wanted to happen after this uh, modal view controller dismisses itself, this completion handler would be notified. It would get a callback, and then you could imp you could implement any logic there that you might need to do um, throughout that transition. Uh, so, and just taking a look at the documentation for this, um, it dismisses the view controller that was presented modally by the view controller uh, with all the details here and uh, descriptions of the parameters, etc. Uh, so now that we have done that, everything is linked up and connected. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, an iPhone 6 simulator here. And let's go ahead and fire that up. Give this a whirl. And Xcode is taking its sweet time. <laughs> and while this is going, there's there, there's a few ways that we can implement navigation in iOS. What's what's most commonly known um, is uh, a navigation controller with a navigation stack, and transitioning uh, via pushing and popping view controllers. And then for standalone view controllers, like what we have in this application, uh, modal transitions. Uh, and both are used under different contexts, and we'll get into uh, navigation controllers in a later tutorial. But let's just make sure this works. I'm going to go ahead and hit login. And sure enough, we're at view controller 2. And let's go back to view controller 1. Hit close. And we're back. And we're there. And we're back. So everything looks like it's working as intended. And uh, that covers all of the objectives for this tutorial. And like I said, we will be covering uh, how to implement navigation uh, controller uh, using navigation stack and pushing and popping view controllers uh, so that you have a better understanding of all of the different options available uh, for navigating iOS applications. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. And uh, as always, uh, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe as it helps out a lot for more future tutorials to come. So thank you so much for stopping by.